There are many myths about the animals we share this planet with. One myth is that salamanders are immune to fire. Another well-known myth is that you can't touch a baby bird or else its mom won't take it back. Another, even more widespread myth is that Hideo Kojima isn't overrated. But one myth has arguably affected one animal more than any other on this planet. This is how bad science doomed the shark. Now entering the facility. The Earth sharks are in a bad spot. 100 million sharks a year are killed by humans. Why? Well, the vast majority of those deaths are in service of shark fin soup and so-called medicine. Now I say medicine because it's based on the fact that everyone seems to know that sharks don't get cancer. Now let me state categorically right at the top, this is not true. And setting aside for a moment the silly idea that if you eat some soup or a pill with shark in it, you get shark powers, why does everyone seem to think this? How did legitimate shark science become snake oil? First of all, I'll admit, it's easy to believe almost anything about sharks. They are amazing creatures. They've been around for at least 450 million years. Sharks are evolutionarily older than trees. Think about that, bruh. They can detect temperature differences in water of one thousandth of one degree Celsius. They can sense the electromagnetic signals from the nervous systems of prey. Sharks have both the biggest fish that we know of and the oldest fish that we know of. This greenie boy right here was born before Isaac Newton. But I think if you stop the average person on the street and ask them to tell you a shark fact, as I often do, why do they always run away, they'd tell you some version of sharks don't get cancer. Why everyone seems to know this begins with another shark fact. Sharks ain't got no bones. Instead, they have cartilage. Cartilage is an amazing biological material. You have it in your ears, nose, joints, and spine, where it reduces friction and forces on the bone prison we're forced to live in against our will. Sharks have cartilage instead of a bony skeleton, but the cancer cartilage connection didn't start with sharks. It started in the 1970s, when some scientists were looking into angiogenesis, or the creation of new blood vessels. It's a process critical to the formation of tumors, which need a lot of nutrients to grow and spread. If they could find something that stopped angiogenesis, therefore, it might help stop cancer as well. Further studies showed that both baby rabbit and cow cartilage did just that. Those tissues placed next to tumors in experimental animals prevented tumors from growing. This is when another scientist stepped in and reckoned that since sharks are all cartilage, they might be an even better animal model to look at. And lo and behold, studies indicated that shark cartilage stopped tumors from growing too. Further study also indicated that some shark species were relatively unaffected by common carcinogens. Hmm. This is all super interesting, right? Well, this is where everything went wrong. After all of this legitimate shark science, this book, this single book is arguably the worst thing to happen to shark populations since Jaws. Even worse than that Megalodon documentary? Yes, Arya, even worse than that. And I'm still mad at you, Discovery. You know what you did. In 1992, a one Dr. I. William Lane published a book titled Sharks Don't Get Cancer, How Shark Cartilage Could Save Your Life. It was a bestseller. It was featured on 60 Minutes. Then in 1996, a second book hit the shelves. It had the very clever title of Sharks Still Don't Get Cancer. Dr. Lane would go on to make his own shark fishing and cartilage pill business. Within the decade, the shark cartilage industry would be valued at tens of millions of dollars. And I really wish that I didn't have to show you this next part, but you should see. It would be one thing if getting cartilage from sharks was like getting blue blood from horseshoe crabs. Catch, extract, release. But it's not. It's so much worse. I'll give you a moment. When companies want shark cartilage, they butcher them. They cut off their fins while they're still alive and throw them back in the ocean to literally drown. 
It's a gruesome, brutal, inhumane practice that has happened to hundreds of millions, if not billions, of pain-feeling animals. Maybe there would be some sort of justifiable moral argument for this if shark cartilage really did treat cancer. Just something that we'd have to live with. But it doesn't treat cancer. The evidence in favor of this connection is a non-randomized trial in Mexico that Dr. Lane himself conducted. The evidence against all of this is studies from the Mayo Clinic, the National Cancer Institute, the FDA, the FDA, the FDA, and more. To quote my colleague Christy Wilcox, shark cartilage as a cancer cure isn't untested or unproven, it's disproven. What's even more infuriating about all of this is the fact that sharks get cancer. We know that sharks get cancer. We have found tumors on sharks, in sharks, inside shark cartilage itself. Now, am I saying that an entire category of medicine is both untrue and morally indefensible? Yes. Yes, I am. No matter how many people use a thing, no matter how many people believe in a thing, no matter how long, no matter if they call it traditional or not, the demand for shark cartilage represents nothing less than a needless and bottomless pit of animal suffering. The one good piece of news here is that Dr. Lane's shark cartilage company has been sued and fined into oblivion. But the sharks are still in enormous trouble. Sharks are slow-growing creatures. Populations simply cannot and will not keep up with millions upon millions of gruesome deaths a year. Food chains that need them sitting at the top as apex predators will struggle and strain. Shark populations worldwide have dropped by over 70% in just 50 years. Well, now that you're thoroughly depressed, what do we do now? Well, as always, raising general awareness like we're trying to do now matters. Supporting policies against certain types of shark fishing and all types of shark finning matter. But it also matters to support the sharks in smaller, yet still scientifically fascinating ways. I want to introduce you to a community finance rewilding organization that touches grass to protect biodiversity worldwide, Planet Wild. It's a global community of people that want to give back to nature by funding frontline ecosystem restoration projects. Think of it like crowdfunding Mother Nature's hospital bill, where she needs it most. Each month, Planet Wild selects a new project to protect animals, forests, and or oceans. And they document these missions with video reports so you can immediately see the impact of your contribution. You don't receive a postcard or email at the end of the year like with other organizations. No, you see a fantastic video here on YouTube so you can see exactly where your contribution goes. I want to bring your attention specifically to a recent mission to bring adorable baby cat sharks back from the dead. It funds Shark Lab Malta, which collects still viable shark eggs from deceased mothers at the fish market. It hatches those babies and then releases them back into the wild. Kind of mind-blowing, right? More than half of all shark species in Malta are threatened with extinction. And this is a global trend, as shark populations worldwide have crashed by more than 70% in just 50 years. Sharks have always been one of my favorite animals. They're why I wanted to be a marine biologist as a kid. I've even swam with sharks. Supporting Planet Wild in their mission is just one small way that I can give back. And with Planet Wild, I don't just support sharks, I support all of Mother Nature because it's all interconnected. All of Planet Wild's work is made possible by a community of nature enthusiasts like you and me. I'm already a member myself because burrowing owls are literally the cutest thing. One person doesn't have a lot of impact on the environment, but bundling our resources together as a community can do more than you think. Give whatever amount, big or small, feels right to you and see your impact in nature in a mini documentary here on YouTube. And I know you sign up for too many things already, but I encourage you to check this one out. Not just for you, but for a cause bigger than us. If you want to join a growing community that makes a real difference, go check out Planet Wild through the link in the description or by scanning this QR code and consider becoming a supporter. As a special gift, I will cover the first month of the first 150 people to go and sign up with the code KYLE9. And if you don't feel like supporting Planet Wild anymore, don't worry, you can cancel at any time. Of course, this isn't the first time that speculative science has gotten out of control. One of the greatest scientists of all time, Linus Pauling, kind of went 
crazy after he decided that vitamin C also treats cancer and the common cold and a bunch of other things. And now 50 years later, we're still taking mega doses of vitamin C and it still does none of those things. But obviously the shark cancer myth is causing a lot of real harm in this world and a lot of unnecessary suffering. Sharks are not mindless killing machine man eaters. They're fascinating boneless boys and they need our help. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to Planet Wild for sponsoring today's episode, and thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of today's video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white shark cage, if you want videos early, access to the private Discord, private members only live streams with me each month, you can go to the link you see on Aria right now and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough in our nerdy missions, you get your name in every single video. As you can see, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you. How am I possibly going to pass? You know, this isn't the first time that just a scant scientific evidence has been misinterpreted, co-opted, and then exploited into a giant thing. We mentioned the vitamin C connection, but there's another one that had a whole cartoon based on a misunderstanding. Spinach. Scientists used to think there was a lot more spinach, good stuff, in spinach, like iron. But it turned out that someone had misplaced a decimal point in early studies and uh, Popeye isn't a thing. It's a whole industry of spinach makes you strong. It's all because some guy was like, yut. At least that wasn't as impactful as decimating an entire population of animals. Thanks for watching. Ooh, you gotta be quick. <laughs>